eight. Okay. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Okay, this is oh my gosh, this is bad. The apocalypse. Just While I am the queen of Melbourne on YouTube, I must have been living under a rock growing up because I have never played old school RuneScape, RuneScape growing up. Now recently I decided to check it out and I'm going to be showing you my journey through it. Disclaimer, this is my second attempt at having an account. I previously recorded the first episode only to be permanently banned for macroing, which I've been falsely accused of. I have appealed the decision and got denied. I've tried everything to unban my account. And let me just point out, the account has a frigging bond in the bank that is now worthless. I do really wish they'd make their detection better and actually ban the real bots instead of penalising those who actually play the game as it's intended and follow the rules completely. Catflap was an amazing character and shall be missed. With that out of the way, let's play. So first things first, a name. The hardest thing to do for me because I suck at names and let's face it I'm not going to find something better than cat flaps I mean I should have named myself cat flaps too but at the time I didn't think and named myself pirate catter which I think was a missed opportunity so tutorial island is where I start and quite frankly is boring so let's just skip over it and start our adventure in Lumbridge so first things first, my inventory is full of stuffs so I'm not going to use right now. So I shove it all in the bank except for my shield and my weapon and then I'll make my way over to the chickens. Now my aim is to increase my combat level which starts at level 3. Chickens are a good way to do this as they barely hit you and anyone who can die to these chickens are weak and shall bow before me as I am the chicken master and nobody can take that away from me. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. Uh, so as I'm going through the chickens I'm picking up their feathers as they stack and are very useful further along in the game and also I'm getting bones from chicken because I'm burying the bones in the ground like a newbie but honestly I have to start somewhere and get some prey levels so that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. Now with my attack, strength and defense at 5, Adventurer John is going to give me some stuff for completing the warrior path. So I switch to my new stuff, my steel longsword and my steel medieval helm and to the gals I go. Now the cows I'm picking up their cow hides and bones. Cowhides as a free to pay play player is useless until you get the restrictions lifted from the Grand Exchange. That happens at 10 quest points, 100 total skill levels and also 20 in-game hours. This is also the requirements needed to trade. So without those you can't sell certain items such as cowhides or uh, feathers so for right now I'm just accumulating them and banking them and I'm going to be selling them later after I tan them uh, for some cash. So I got pretty bored of cows uh, relatively quickly and decided to do some quests so I started with the cook's assistant which gave me one quest point and 300 cooking experience. Followed by Sheep Shearer at one quest point, 150 crafting experience and 60 coins. X marks the spot at one quest point and antique lamp which I put into crafting 200 coins and a beginner clue scroll. Witch's potion which gave me one quest point and 325 magic experience. And then Romeo and Juliet which just gives me five quest points. Now these little imp things, whenever I see one, I kill it. They drop beads and they drop four types, which is red, white, black and yellow. Uh, they're used in a quest and they're not very difficult to kill, but they just keep teleporting, which is blimming annoying. 
Rune Mysteries is done. One quest point, an air talisman, and rune essence mine access. So right now I'm just gonna I've got the inventory space, I've got a pickaxe on me, so I'm gonna mine some rune essence before I leave this place. And at this point in time, I've been playing for two hours and twenty minutes, and this is where I get bored of quests, so I switch things up. I did switch over to killing the giant frogs in the Lumbridge Swamp because they drop big bones, which gives more prayer experience each bone that you bury. I also bought a full mithril gear since at low levels these feckers hit hard and can deplete your health quite quickly. Now with that break out of the way, <laughs> back to quests. Ernest the Chicken was next on the list with 4 quest points and 300 coins. The Restless Ghost, one quest point, 1125 prayer experience and a ghost speak amulet. Now I finished Demon Slayer but didn't manage to get a screenshot of it but it does say in my chat that I completed it as you can see. That gave me 3 quest points and a weapon called Silverlight. In Catcher, which gives me one quest point, 875 magic experience and an amulet of accuracy. Vampire Slayer, which gives me three quest points and 4,825 attack XP. This brings my total quest points to 22, which is more, much more than I need to lift the restriction on the Grand Exchange. Now, just the long wait for the 20 in-game hours. Taking a break, I go to the mine. I need mining levels for some future quests, so what better way to start at Lumbridge by filling my inventory with a mix of copper and tin, which will I will then form into bronze bars when I heat it at the furnace at a later date. I did this for a while before getting back to questing, starting with Doric's quest for one quest point, 1,300 mining experience and 180 coins, including the use of Doric's anvils. Goblin Diplomacy was next with 5 quest points, 200 crafting XP and a singular gold bar. Pirate's Treasure, 2 quest points and 1-eyed Hector's Treasure and inside the treasure was a gold ring and an emerald which is nice. The Knight Sword, 1 quest point and a whopping 12,725 smithing experience and below ice mountain with one quest point 2000 coins and access to the runes of Camdozel. Now as you can see I'm now wearing adamant armor and each time I can get better armor then I will go to the grand exchange and for anyone wondering currently these are my skills levels with a total of 236 total levels. So during the night I did a few more levels in random skills and now my skill levels look something like this with a total of 309. So I've been a very busy cat indeed. So close to 20 in-game hours now and it's a pain at paying the 10 golds required to bypass the gate from Lumbridge to al -Karid. It's not extortion in the grand scheme of things but having to go through the dialogue each time I want to pass is very annoying so the quest has to be Prince Ali's rescue and that gives me 3 quest points. 700 coins and I get free use of the toll gate between Lumbridge and al -Karid. so instead of interacting with the guards I just click the gate and walk through and it saves me a whole bunch of time. Now I hope I pronounce this correctly and if not I give everyone permission to rip me a new one but I finished uh, Myth, Mist, Mythalin mystery for one quest point 600 crafting xp and an uncut ruby emerald and sapphire oh my gosh finally shield of arid is completed this one i had to get a friend to help me out with since this is like i think one of two quests in the entirety of old school runescape that requires two people to complete now there could be more uh, i don't know all i've been told is that there's one more that 
does, but I dislike the idea of having to wait for someone else to do a particular quest. Especially as a free-to-play player, when I can't even trade until I've got, like, all the restrictions lifted as in the same as the grand exchange so i've been sitting on this for pretty much 14 hours uh but it did provide me for one quest point and 600 coins black knight's fortress is done with three quest points and 20 uh 2500 coins the corsair curse two quest points and corsair cove bank access now that leaves me with one final quest left dragon slayer one requires 32 quest points which i have and recommended stuff for this is a combat level of 45 magic level of 33 and prayer level of 37 to use protect from magic which to be honest i have none of these so after grinding for a little while uh, i finally started my quest under the recommended stats so i started with 41 combat level full adamant gear and prayer level of 24 and let's just say this was an experience i had no idea what i was doing i am not a member so i couldn't use anti-fire potions my prayer wasn't at level 37 so i didn't even have protect from magic and i didn't even have level 40 in attack or defense meaning i couldn't even get rune gear i was using adamant gear now i could obviously tell you what happened but let me just show you instead Climb over the wall. Yep. Okay. Where am I? Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. I don't know where I'm doing. Okay. What am I doing? What am I doing? Can my character just... Okay, so I'm just gonna sit here and hope for the best. Okay, no, eat. Okay, come on, come on, just do some damage to it. Uh, okay, so it's done one damage. Oh my gosh, it's just not looking good. <laughs> oh gosh. I can't attack, just attack the goddamn dragon. Okay. <sighs> Come on. Oh man. Okay, so this is not going well, but I'm trying. Come on, come on. God. Oh, eat. Okay, nope. Eat! Eat! Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is... Oh my gosh, this is bad. Okay, okay, okay. Just calm down, just calm down. Nope. Okay, eat. Yeah. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Yep, yeah, nope, eat, 
eight. Damn it! Can you stop doing Dragon Breath on me? And because I am a free to play, I do not have anti poison, so this is not a fun time for me. Come on, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. And I should have probably got all of my stuff to level 40 before starting this. Okay, uh, no, no, can you stop dragon breathing me? Because that's not helping at all. Come on, come on. No, no, no. I've, I haven't got a lot of food left. Stop. Come on, come on. Oh my gosh. This is bad. This is really bad. Oh my god. Oh my god. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, 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 no. Eat, eat. Oh my gosh. Holy moly! Oh gosh! Yeah, take the head. Oh my gosh! So, as you can see, I wasn't having a great time with it, especially during the end, but I defeated Elvarg, and because I'm a strong warrior, I pulled off its head. They do say that I cut it off, but I don't have a knight with me, so let's just pretend that I'm strong enough to dismember them with my bare hands. Now, I did take a full inventory of food, and from this point on, I'll be making sure that I hit the recommended levels before starting any quest. So, I use my teleport to Lumbridge, since I am not walking past the lesser demons and such. I then canoe over to Edgeville, run to this guy's name, who I'm not even going to pronounce, and finish the quest. Boom! Two quest points, 18,650. 50 strength and defense XP and the ability to wear rune and dragon plate bodies. Um, as a free to play player, I can only wear up to rune gear, I can't wear dragon gear, but it's always nice if I ever do become a member. I have a total level of 44 quest points, uh, all quests are done, and it feels so nice. So, for now, my adventure ends for this episode. I want to thank everyone who got this far, as well as my Patreon supporters, Anxious Aaron, Missy, and Sir Inarius. Hopefully this account won't be wrongly accused for macroing, but I'm having to play this on Steam rather than Runelight like Cat Flaps was. I would love to switch over to Runelight at some point, maybe once I get a membership, and don't forget, comment down below uh, about how I did, um, how you did when you first started RuneScape. And also, if you want, subscribe to me, give me a like, uh, that helps me out a bunch. And with that, I'll see you all in the next episode. Take care.